So it's internship season again, and I wanted to make a video talking about arguably the most important step in anyone's professional career. That is the process of creating a resume. Your resume is essentially the first impression of yourself that you give to any company or employer that you're interested in, so it's extremely important. These days, the way the market is currently in, using the right resume design, layout structure, is essential to even hear back from employers. From my experience, over 50% of applications don't get a response, and other statistics show that 75% of resumes uh, get auto-rejected through every application. This means that if you're getting a lot of rejections, chances are the problem is with your resume. Don't worry though, because we're gonna talk about why and also how to fix that in this video, and we're also gonna cover other things like the application process, uh, the mechanics that go behind it. So stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the video. Also, be sure to stay till the end of the video because I share some insider information about tips and tools that we use uh, when reviewing candidates' resumes and what we look for in a candidate. All right, first, let's talk about the most important thing that you'll need to learn throughout this whole process. That is the ATS scan. ATS stands for Applicant Tracking System, and it's a type of software that companies use to monitor and manage their applications. Essentially, how it works is that when a recruiter posts a job, the ATS system uses the job-specific information, such as the title, required skills, desired experience, etc to create a profile for an ideal candidate. Now, as people apply and submit their resumes, this ATS system uh, you know, parses, ranks, and sorts these resumes according to the ideal profile. Since not many people know this, they tend to not optimize their resume to pass an ATS scan as they assume a human will read their resume, uh, which is the reason why they tend to get automatically rejected. ATS systems are usually sensitive to things like the format, the keywords used for the resume, and other various things. For example, although to human machine learning modeling and predictive modeling might be synonymous, uh, to an ATS system that might not be the case, which will end up in you missing out. Like I said before, most people don't know about ATS, but it's usually listed in the company's terms and conditions when you apply for that job, or it might also be listed in the URL of the job itself. Itself. Now, why is this ATS scan so important? Like I said before, over 75% of applications are screened out during this process. In this modern day, almost all companies will use some sort of ATS scan or something similar which will store and track all applications for specific jobs. And you know, depending on the company, you can be automatically rejected based on how the application tracking system rates you. Honestly, like I said before, I've yet to see a company that has not used an ATS scan in their hiring process. However, I do see companies acknowledging the use of ATS scans and AI uh, in their application process. Do I agree with it? No, not really, but there isn't really any Thing we can do about it either. Seriously though, the reality of the world right now is that uh, everything is designed to scale and this is the best solution proposed to companies right now, so we just have to deal with it. So with all that being said, uh, instead of complaining about how horrible the system actually is, I think our time and energy is better spent working around it. In order to pass an ATS scan, you have to truly understand how it works. Like I said before, the high level summary of how this works is they use certain questions and the job description to determine if you're going to be a good fit to move on to the next round. Honestly, you're probably familiar or you've probably seen some of these questions before. Uh, there's structured usually like, you know, how many years of experience you have with R, Python, or SQL? Do you require sponsorship? Do you have any experience in the health industry or the insurance industry? Are you able to commute to the onsite location? Are you familiar with A-B testing or time series forecasting? Hopefully you get the gist. Anyway, all that being said, the best way to pass an ATS scan is to model your resume based on the job description. Yes, this means you will need to optimize your resume for each specific job application you apply for. Uh, depending on the job, specific requirements might be uh, more tool-based or you know skill-based or even domain-based. Obviously, this is gonna be more time-consuming, but I personally think the ROI is worth it. I've done these experiments myself and had some of my friends do them too. And my conclusion is that in this day and age, having a specially catered resume to the job application or job description that you're applying for is the way to go. The rate of response is much higher and the interview to application ratio is also significantly better. After you get over the hump of this new change, you'll understand and see how little effort is needed to specially cater each resume to uh, job descriptions uh, using this strategy. All right, great. Now that we know all that, let's talk about how you can actually build your resume. Before we even get into resume designs, layouts, formats, stuff like that, I would recommend you open a Google Doc or a Word Doc and list out all the relevant stuff you've done uh, according to the job you're interested in. This can include any tools, softwares, frameworks, or languages that you've used in any school projects, case studies, work projects, experiments uh, that is related to the job or niche that you're applying for. I personally like writing down literally everything I've done for all the companies I've worked for, uh, just so I know I'm not missing out on anything. Again, you can do this on any note-taking app. It doesn't have to be pretty neat or organized. Just blurb out all the information you have uh, so long as it's easy to access. You'll want to continuously update this document as you do more stuff so you can easily uh, pull in information and port it over to your resume. This will also help you understand the types or calibers of jobs that you're ready to start applying for. Great, now that you've done that, we can move on to the actual resume-like format. All right, let's talk about some of the requirements of a resume. Generally, there are gonna be four to five sections. 
These sections might appear as different titles, names, or headers, but they're usually the same thing. I personally like to keep the following experience on my resume, skills, work slash professional experience, leadership slash volunteer experience, uh, projects, and education. Another big requirement is to have a one-page resume. This has been a requirement for quite a long time now, but honestly, I've been seeing a lot of uh, multi-page resumes come in recently for interviews, but I still don't think we're quite there yet. I personally think that if you have less than 10 years of experience, you should continue your resume to be one page. Remember, your resume is your first impression and you wanna have as little friction as possible. Employers typically have a very busy schedule, so having to read a 10-page resume after after already having read a hundred different resumes, it's just gonna turn them off. Depending on the company and the position you're going for, you're essentially trying to sell yourself as a six-figure sale, so you wanna make sure you make it worth your time. All right, next we're gonna talk about good and bad resumes. I'm gonna put up some examples of good resumes that I would use on the screen. Generally, a good resume, in my opinion, is one page long, clearly organized with the four or five sections needed, and maybe even subsections for skills and education, just to showcase your certifications and toolkit. I personally prefer no color resumes. I think it's simple, less distracting, and ATS friendly. I also have seen double column resumes work, but rarely, so I would stick to a single column resume. Recently, I've also seen a lot of short professional summaries at the top of resumes, and I used to be against it, but I think if you word it correctly, you can use it to your advantage and pass an ATS scan. This is probably the easiest section to tweak or modify on your resume to cater for each application. And like I said before, I would definitely avoid multi-column resumes, especially if they're above two columns. Anything above two columns, I would not recommend. I would also avoid too much color on my resume. I don't have any stats to back this, but I personally have never seen a colored resume come through for an interview. Again, this could go either way. I personally don't think that colors affect ATS scans too much, but I would stick to professional subtle colors to be less distracting. Also, I do not recommend putting your photo on your resume. I think that space could be better used elsewhere. You can always link your LinkedIn profile on your resume so they can connect and find you there. I also avoid putting stuff like interests and hobbies on there. I think this depends on who you are and your personality. I personally just think that space could be used elsewhere, uh, such as additional work experience or projects to make you a stronger candidate overall. Obviously, there's no one size fit all solution. It depends on stuff like the application, company values, uh, you know, recruiter and other factors. This is just my general advice based on my experience. Oh yeah, by the way, I'll leave all the resumes I mentioned down below. All right, now let's get into the bullet points of a resume. There are many ways to write your resume bullet points, but I personally like to follow the XYZ format. By that, I mean accomplished X measured by Y doing Z. I know a lot of people struggle with the measure or Y component of the equation, which is completely understandable. I did too. You can use any quantifiable metrics such as profit, earned, uh, time saved, revenue growth, etc. Literally, the ways to measure these metrics are endless. If you're in the field of data like me, uh, this part shouldn't be too hard to measure. Or maybe if you work in customer service, you can talk about how many customers you serve, the number of tickets you resolve, etc. Generally, when you're given a business task or a problem to solve, they want you to either improve a metric or create one altogether. For example, if you're tasked to create a dashboard for a product launch, talk about the importance of that dashboard, how much time you save your stakeholders, etc. You can literally even talk about the metrics that dashboard is tracking specifically. Some commonly used metrics across various different fields are stuff like SLA, liquidity, etc. Now these days, I consciously try to track uh, the metric beforehand uh, so that I can compare them to my end result after the project is done. After talking to hiring managers and recruiters, I learned that the value these metrics provide are quick and immediate, which is why they are so important. On average, employers spend about six to seven seconds reading a resume, which is why these quick wins are crucial to your success. So yeah, I would make sure to structure my resume in that XYZ format, essentially trying to make it a highlight or accomplishment reel, not a responsibility checklist. Think of it like a dating profile. You don't really wanna display all your boring responsibilities on your dating profile. Now onto the best and arguably the most important part of this video how to use the job description to your advantage. If you look at passing the application stage the same way you look at a test, you're gonna to wanna to practice, study, and revise to pass that test. This might mean finding study resources, learning material, and other things to help you pass that test, or in this case, the job posting. Most people probably don't know this, but the job description usually has all the answers you need to get your foot through the door. Usually, these answers are under the job responsibility or preferred requirement sections on the job description. As you might notice, there are certain keywords like BI tools, predictive modeling, big data, data visualizations, programming languages, etc., that are frequently frequently present in these job descriptions. There also might be more obvious answers like must-haves or mandatory requirements which automatically tell you if you're fit for the job or not. Usually these are around minimum years of experience, familiarity with certain tools or frameworks, uh, etc. They're also nice to have or bonus skills such as uh, domain specific tools or skills that they are looking for. Obviously, you're probably not gonna have all the tools or skills listed. However, the goal is to have as many as possible for that specific job posting. You might also have experience with similar tools or frameworks that might help, but generally ATS scans look for very specific keywords. This is why I like using websites like Simplify or JobScan to understand where I stand. Simplify is a company created by a Stanford dropout and an ex-Facebook software engineer to help people like you and me land our dream jobs. I use a combination of both these websites to help me understand my ATS score and also the chances of me landing that specific job. Uh, there's a Google extension I can use with Simplify to help me autofill my applications based on my resume and certain questions that I've answered beforehand on my Simplify profile, which makes the process super, super easy 
and super, super fast. Simplify is not sponsoring this video, but I just like using their tool, uh, same as JobScan. So uh, feel free to check it out. I'll leave some links down below. To those of you data nerds out there, I also use a tool called datanerd.tech to try and understand what skills and tools are frequently used or in demand in the field of data right now. So I'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested in checking that out too. But yeah, the individualized nature of each job description is the reason why you need ATS tools like JobScan or uh, Simplify to help you understand your chances and what you can improve or areas you can improve in terms of your resume uh, to generalize or specify certain skills, tools, uh, experience levels, stuff like that to help increase your chances altogether. I know the process entirely is not convenient, but these tools definitely do help out a lot. Generally though, I know the skills and tools requested are pretty transferable, so that's not a big deal. However, when it comes to ATS scan and passing that initial stage, getting your resume to an actual recruiter to read and get that phone screen, it is super important to match that specific word or keyword one-to-one uh, -one just so you can get past that ATS scan or AI scan. Personally, I think if you're able to pick up a language like Python, you should definitely be able to learn something like R, or if you use a data warehousing tool like Redshift, you should definitely be able to transfer that knowledge into something like Snowflake. However, the ATS systems used are not that smart, so it's super good to diversify your skill set and toolkit so that you can pull out bullet points when it comes to specific job descriptions uh, with specific tools or skills needed. Sometimes you can also incorporate certain core values you see on the job description onto your resume through the uh, leadership or volunteer experience sections. I don't know if ATS scans look at this or even care about this, but I think it's worth giving it a try. So yeah, use that initial blurb of a Google Doc or Word Doc that you created with all the relevant stuff you've done for work, whether it comes for skills or tools or languages, etc., uh, and create a specific resume for each job description by using those bullet points and these uh, tools I mentioned before. Generally, the sections that will fluctuate the most are your professional summary, your work experience, and your skills sections. The education section will usually stay the same. Generally though, if you don't meet the hard requirements when it comes to you know minimum years of experience, toolkit, uh, skill set, when it comes to the job description, I wouldn't bother applying at all. I think it's a waste of time. You're probably gonna get automatically rejected anyway. I'd much rather spend that time building up my experience and my skills uh, through projects and courses or even my current role. I personally believe the best way to learn is through applications, so I strongly recommend you try this out for yourself. Go ahead and try out several variations of resumes on a specific job posting and see which one works best. Remember, the goal of a resume is to get your foot through the door and hopefully lead to an interview or a phone screen. Now, I'm sure you came to this realization by yourself, but the sad truth is, is that if you don't have any relevant experience or no experience at all to the specific position you're looking to apply for, the chances of you getting that job is very slim. Good news is that opportunity is everywhere and it's never been easier to gain experience without having a job. Companies tend to look at personal projects and courses as experience. So if you're new to a field or if you haven't had any fortune landing a new job, I personally would recommend building out projects uh, based on job description skills that you notice or even from blog sites or uh, other mediums. Kaggle, GitHub, and Medium.com are very good resources that I like to use when it comes to looking for new data sets or fun projects to build out my skills. I actually made an entire video talking about how to gain experience if you have none. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out. I'll leave a link down below. It's also super important to remember that there's no one size fit all solution when it comes to creating a resume. So make sure to keep that in mind. The market is really ugly right now and I project that it's gonna be that way for a while, but that doesn't mean it's impossible for you to land a job. You just have to put in more effort and watching this video was the first step. Hopefully you learned something from this video and if you did, I hope you implement it soon. I have a video coming up talking about ways I would apply in this current job market to increase the interview to application ratio, uh, what mediums and job boards I would use to apply, etc. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below. I will do my best to respond to them as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, do consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really does help. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.